Hello citizens of internet. I am Dr. Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology and ex-head of Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai, India. This presentation synthesizes current evidence about osteoporosis and outlines the key strategies for its prevention from a gynecological perspective. I am going to highlight evidence-based framework that empowers gynecologists to mitigate osteoporosis through proactive lifelong interventions. Gynecologists often serve as primary care physicians for women, particularly during reproductive and perimenopausal years, making them pivotal in the early identification and prevention of osteoporosis, a silent killer. Gynecologists as well as orthopedic surgeons have a crucial role to play in taking care of women's bone health. While gynecologists drive upstream prevention in younger women, orthopedic surgeons mitigate downstream fracture consequences. Effective management requires interdisciplinary coordination between gynecologists, radiologists and orthopedic surgeons, particularly for high-risk patients. For example, premature ovarian insufficiency related bone loss, etc. For gynecologists to be able to address bone health of women, they must be aware of some basic facts about bone health with special reference to role of female hormones, especially lack thereof. Hence, I will spend a few minutes explaining the basics. First, let me discuss peak bone mass. Approximately 90% of peak bone mass is attained by the age of 18 and nearly all of it by the age of 30. Adequate nutrition, particularly in the form of calcium and proteins, is crucial for long-term skeletal health during adolescence and young adulthood. It is well known that bone mass begins to deplete approximately 10 years before menopause, which is known as the premenopausal period. It is important to note one significant ethnic difference between Indian women and Western women. While median age of menopause in Western women is 51 years, it is 47 years in Indian women. Therefore, the crucial message is that attempts to prevent bone loss in Indian women must commence approximately 5 years earlier compared to their Western counterparts. Consequently, the window of opportunity to enhance or preserve bone mass begins around 35 years rather than 40 years as projected in Western literature. A short comment about estrogen, the bone protector. Estrogen plays a pivotal role in bone protection by inhibiting osteoclast mediated bone resorption and promoting osteoblast activity. The gradual or abrupt decline in estrogen levels during menopause directly accelerates trabecular bone loss, particularly in the spine and femur. Consequently, estrogen is considered a central factor in the pathogenesis of osteoporosis. I will not delve into the intricacies of various hormonal therapy regimens employed for menopause treatment and bone mass preservation. This topic will be comprehensively addressed in a special YouTube video on menopausal hormonal therapy, which I will upload later. Let me mention some of the red flags for osteoporosis. Premature ovarian insufficiency and hypothalamic amenorrhea, for example, that seen in athletes or individuals with anorexia, must be addressed promptly as these conditions hinder bone density development. When should women start calcium supplementation? Women should start dietary calcium optimization by the age of 30 and supplements if needed from the age of 35, especially for Indian women and also for those with poor intake or risk factors. This is according to ACOG guidelines. Honestly speaking, most of us gynecologists are guilty of not counseling our patients about this recommendation. Women should begin calcium supplementation of 
1000 to 1200 mg per day in perimenopause which for indian women should begin by 35 years although dietary sources alone are often insufficient encourage calcium rich diets that include dairy products and green leafy vegetables it is crucial to recognize that supplementing calcium alone is insufficient it will not be deposited into bones unless women engage in weight bearing and resistance exercises in conjunction with muscle strengthening weight bearing exercises such as lifting weights walking and jogging and resistance training performed at least 3 or more times per week stimulate osteoblast activity and enhance bone mineral density it is important to note that engaging in daily household chores and cooking is not sufficient to improve bone mass therefore women should make exercise a regular habit also remember vitamin d increases deposition of calcium and phosphorus into bones adequate vitamin d levels that is greater than 30 nanograms per ml enhance calcium absorption and bone mineralization routine screening for vitamin d3 levels and thereafter supplementation of vitamin d are recommended supplementation of vitamin d 800 to 1000 international units per day is essential encourage calcium rich diets as i have already said and vitamin d fortified foods please remember despite abundance of sunshine in india there is a widespread vitamin d deficiency in indian women there are reasons for this melanin reduces production of vitamin d3 in the skin other factors are modesty in women the gora fixation as i call it weather conditions atmospheric pollution cloud cover rainfall etc remember prolonged exposure to sunlight for the whole day will not cause vitamin d toxicity dietary optimization is also crucial adequate protein intake facilitates bone matrix formation while excessive sodium and caffeine consumption should be minimized lifestyle risk mitigation significantly contributes to improved bone health advise cessation of smoking as it negatively impacts osteoblast function restrict alcohol consumption to less than one drink per day both of these measures are independent risk factors for bone loss beware of the fact that conditions like heart failure correlate with higher osteoporosis risk due to shared pathophysiological pathways for example inflammation mineral dysregulation etc screen these women for osteopenia or osteoporosis aggressively gynecologists can employ opportunistic screening by utilizing imaging modalities dual energy x-ray absorptometry dexa is recommended for women aged 65 and above or earlier for women with risk factors such as early menopause or fragility fractures when using dexa screening the t score is the most important score for determining fracture risk the t score compares patient's bone mineral density to that of a healthy young adult reference population t score less than or equal to 2.5 at the hip or spine is diagnostic of osteoporosis and indicates a high risk for fragility fractures lower t scores are strongly associated with increased fracture risk and treatment is generally recommended for individuals with t scores in the osteoporotic range additionally the frax tool can be used alongside dexa which incorporates t score and clinical risk factors to estimate the 10 year probability of major osteoporotic and hip fractures however the t score remains the primary dexa derived metric for fracture risk assessment and treatment decisions even though i am talking about gynecologist perspective it would be a glaring omission 
if I didn't discuss the effect of pregnancy and lactation on bone health, if any. Pregnancy, the postpartum period and lactation involve intricate bone metabolism alterations that typically resolve without long-term adverse effects for the majority of women. Nevertheless, specific physiological mechanisms and rare conditions may increase osteoporosis risk in vulnerable populations, such as women with low body mass, those experiencing malnutrition, and those with mutations in the LRP5 and WNT1 genes. During lactation, elevated parathyroid hormone-related protein facilitates calcium mobilization from mineral bone to facilitate milk production, resulting in reversible bone mineral density loss of approximately 3 to 10 percent. While lactation-related bone loss is generally transient, prolonged lactation and amenorrhea or multiple pregnancies accompanied by inadequate nutrition may elevate long-term risk. Therefore, it is essential to assess postpartum bone health in high-risk cases. Supplementation of 1200 milligrams of calcium and 800 to 1000 international units of vitamin D per day during lactation can effectively mitigate bone loss. A small subset estimated at 0.4 to 4 per 100,000 pregnancies develops pregnancy and lactation associated osteoporosis, PLO in short, where women suffer from vertebral or hip fractures due to pathological bone loss. Women with PLO risk factors, for example, fragility factors and family history warrant baseline postpartum DEXA and FRAX assessment. Before I conclude, I cannot help but talk about the role of artificial intelligence in osteoporosis screening and detection. AI agents like Bonescreen.de are transforming osteoporosis detection by providing accurate, automated and scalable screening solutions that enhance early diagnosis and facilitate timely management, especially in populations that may otherwise go unscreened. The AI-generated reports can be used by clinicians including gynecologists and orthopedic surgeons to identify at-risk individuals, initiate further diagnostic workup, and implement preventive or therapeutic strategies earlier in the disease course. Bonescreen.de uses deep learning algorithms to automatically segment vertebral bodies and assess both trabecular and integral volumetric bone mineral density VVMD from clinical CT scans without requiring dedicated bone imaging or additional radiation exposure. In the end, I will say this. Prevention of osteoporosis begins in the gynecology clinic. Every gynecological consultation is an opportunity to build bone health literacy. Proactive screening early lifestyle guidance and hormone management can reduce osteoporosis burden significantly. Unfortunately, most gynecologists do not, I repeat, do not inquire about women's bone health related issues during their consultations. In conclusion, more than the women I am talking about, I want to sensitize gynecologists all over India to make necessary efforts to improve women's bone health and act as primary sentinels for bone health in women, leveraging routine visits for osteoporosis risk stratification. Integrate bone health into every gynecological encounter from adolescence through menopause to prevent osteoporosis-related disability and mortality. Thank you for the privilege of your time. If you want to know more about this topic, or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are clinical cases in obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. You can also follow me on other social media platforms 
लाइक फेसबुक और मेटा ब्लॉग स्पॉट एंड इंस्टाग्राम द लिंक्स आर गिवन हियर If you enjoyed this video hit the like button share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you for watching